Hey, all cheaters, and welcome to the Always Cheating Podcast. My name is Josh. I'm here with Brandon. Brandon, how are you? Josh, I could be one of two things. I could be, uh, I've got uh, a lot of points. Is that any good? Or uh-huh. I could be FPL is pain. Yes. And I saw both of these sentiments in equal measure uh, during Saturday and Sunday's fixtures. Uh, you know, the, the Sala explosion to start the game week was one thing. Yep. Who you got? You got yep. Sala, and then yep. the Watkins goal and an assist on Sunday. Yep. Um, it's it's a lot of uh, divisive assets. Can we have them all? So this is this is the question that we need to sort of like grapple with on this episode, right? Can we yeah. have them all? Uh, the answer is no. So um, we can just re- you actually can just you can close your. Um, Close your phone. Do people still have phones that close, Brandon? Uh, if you listen to this podcast sure. on your phone, you can Thank go ahead you and too. Mike close Thank you, too. Mike DePietro, Trevor Ingerson, Dave wagner Lodal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> frankly, <laughs> just do the producer read. Let's, let's get out of here. Um, no, I think that it's really the, – the solid thing was uh, – I, I mean, I, it was great uh, getting that, that second goal. And you kind of thought it was a, cl- it was a classic red card goal. Right. A lot of times it was it was it was almost the red card script, which is, you know, when there's an early red card in the match, what often happens, I feel like, is you have a good stretch of 20, 30 minutes where one team sets, you know, sets deep and just like just they're like daring you to break them down. And I was actually a little worried when that because I was like, well, if anybody has like trained a team for playing with 10 players, it's probably Sean Deitch, right? They're going to know what to do, how to handle this. And, and it kind of worked out. And then, you know, it's, it's the year of the handball, Brandon, hashtag year of the handball. We're getting them, uh, Three, four, five handballs. Well, there's four or five handball shouts per match. Every match now is required to have at least one handball penalty issue. The big hand lobby is really surging (laughs) at the moment. The big hand lobby. Uh, So, I I, I mean, they're all like legit by the rule of the law, whatever. I don't want to get into the, you know, any kind of VAR thing. But but once that, then Salah, so Salah gets the pen. And weirdly, I'm starting to feel confident again with Salah Pens, maybe just because he's playing well at the moment. Uh, but he absolutely rifled that, too. Just a great, great pen from Salah. Uh, really no doubt about what he was going to do there. And then uh, from from then on, you know, Everton at least had to try a little bit. But for a moment there, I was like, God, they're really still studying deep. And I'm like, are they – is the goal here just to lose by f- as few goals as possible? But then they they did start to, you know, put a little pressure on kind of late in the match. And uh, and then you get the classic s- second goal of a red card, right? The, the breakaway, I can't remember if it was a corner kick or what it was, just dis- maybe just a dispossession, but um, you know, Everton going forward, trying to get the equalizer, boom, ball, ball pops loose. Darwin has a great run, uh, very unselfish. I felt like to, to pass to Mo there. He definitely could have, a lot of players would just shoot there. And so maybe Darwin is finally starting to, you know, realize his inner Roberto he Firmino or something like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe that too. Uh, but so yes, yeah, so the second solid goal and, uh, but I have been on the other side of that kind of goal many, many times over the years. And it's the second one that kills you, right? <laughs> the first goal you can kind of mm-hmm. mentally, you're mm-hmm. like, okay, I, especially with solid because he's almost never on three bonus after he scores a goal. And so you're like, okay, like one goal, eight points, whatever I can handle this. But the second one, your brain immediately is like, Three bonus, right? There's like no no getting around it. Like you kind of immediately are like, that's a 16 pointer right there. Yeah. Kind of I was as it. a non sala owner right before the end of the match, I had already convinced myself it is possible and uh I would be happy with a seven pointer from Sala. Yep. Yep. I need Everton to score a goal to wipe out his clean sheet. <laughs> right. I need a, a some sort of petulance <laughs> from Sala to yeah. garner a yellow card. Yeah. This is all within my and then in the split yeah. second that it that it happened to take that ball to get out to uh, Darwin. And it was you've seen that that goal at the end of a match many times, but it, in particular with Liverpool, they yeah. have just made a science That's of true. Of the yeah. counterattacking goal. And when I saw yeah. it was just one Everton defender and it was Salah out wide. And as soon yeah. as I don't know, I think it I don't know if it was Michael Keane, I can't remember who it was, who then started converging on Darwin. And I was just like, Well, that's my game week already dead and buried, even before yeah. Salah finished that opportunity. So there it is. Mo Salah. But, I was yeah. I, I I went I went to um FB ref just to be like, he is, and we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, already are episodes <laughs> yeah he, he's just i don't want to overthink it because i think that's the problem with a lot yeah. of fantasy managers right now but he is still this fantasy conundrum at this point in his fantasy career of 
Well, yeah. my the eye test shows, you know, Salah actually had a terrible game in the Merseyside Derby. When yep. he had the ball, he would lose possession. His passing wasn't on. Yep. Yet, he when the moments uh, happen, he, he converts them. So yep. you just go to FB ref to be like, is this just like, is he like wildly outperforming his XG or whatever? And what you see from the stats is his non-penalty XG is – is 3.3 and he's four goals non-penalty and and he's uh, 7.7 uh, total non-penalty goal involvements including assists and he's at 11 goal and assists we so slightly overperforming when you put the penalty goals in there but yeah. my takeaway from looking at these stats is listen it's just a whole mess of fantasy brain uh, calculations of trying to either convince yourself that I don't have to have him. He's overpriced. Yeah. I can't captain him, but yep. he is doing exactly what the FPL points say he's doing. So, yeah. you know, you're getting left behind if you don't have Sala, unfortunately. So I guess that does answer the question from, from Timbo here, which is uh, how do we get ahead this season without tearing up our teams for Sala? Will no Sala manager see the light again? So you have two transfers. Are you, going to try to get Salah in game week 10? Is that a possibility or are you just kind of sticking to your guns? Uh, no Salah, no Salah, no way. Brandon, is that your, is that your working? <laughs> no Salah, right no way. <laughs> um, I'm not about possibilities on this podcast, Josh. I'm about sure. realities okay. and okay. I am a yeah. Mo Salah owner now. Oh, just you've already done it. To yeah. Jump yeah. out ahead of the possible price rise that's going to happen possibly while we're recording this. Yep. Um, we can talk about how I did it. I used two free transfers, so I didn't burn points to get him. Um, like Tell, what let's, I let's, did. Let's hear it. I don't, don't, uh, <laughs> no need to be, no need to be coy about it. Let's, uh, let's. I, I, I threw my Spurs midfield into the wood chipper, is what Both I did. Both of them. Wow. Yeah, so Madison so you, and Son uh, so tomorrow. Both gone. So on Monday, you get the classic FPL farewell match when you yeah. have already transferred out a player, but you still get the ne- the unplayed fixture from them. I I do. I honestly, I kind of love a farewell match. It's you have such mixed yeah. feelings because on the one hand, you want as many points as possible. On the other hand, you don't want so many points that you start to question your decision, you know, it's yeah. like, yeah. Have I, you I ever had more, yeah. <laughs> you ever had more fluent conversations with your colleagues than at going away drinks? There's mm-hmm. something about going away drinks where it's just sort of a, it's a real let off. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I'll probably never see you again. So maybe it's time right. we talk about our mutual love of yes. fixed gear bicycles. Right. It's like you get you get less. It's, yeah, you're not you're not uh, doing like office politics or something, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I yeah. get to have some some cool casual farewell drinks with my friends Madison, <laughs> Madison and Son. It's really no offense to them. We yeah. were just we're just getting rid of the positions altogether. Yeah. Is what happened. It's not performance related. I yeah. should say. Yeah, exactly. It's it's you have um it's a reorg that your that your office is doing and yeah, no one but, no one is no one is guilty of any wrongdoing here. It's just But uh, the winds are changing yeah, in the, the marketplace, are, the Josh, and yeah. we we we've, we've, we've got to yeah. keep up with yeah, the Yeah, you've trends. got a new you've got a new fiscal quarter that kicks in November 1 and you have to uh get, or, the board's or one, got me yeah. over over yeah. a barrel at this point. So, you know, <laughs> that's that's just how it's going to be. Yeah, so the tricky thing was sense. uh Santa Sala and then how do I get the the 2.8 roughly I needed to actually make yeah. that work? Yeah. And so there were many different things I could have done. Uh, Odegaard seemed like the obvious guy to go, but then a, another big theme that we're going to sort of dig into in this episode is the fixture shift yeah, in big, game big, week, yeah. starting in game week 10. Yeah. Exactly. And, and Arsenal was included in that. So I, I felt like, no, I especially ahead of Sheffield United, at home, uh, or uh, yeah, at home for Arsenal. Yep. So ultimately, I was just like, you know what? Why? Why am I so heavily invested in Spurs and undefeated as they are? And so James Madison has become. Any guesses? Well, let's see. He's like eight million, so he had to get someone like around five million. Is that correct? Um, roughly, little little more expensive than five. Okay. Uh, I don't know, Pedro Neto. I wish I could have reached to uh, Pedro Neto, but I, I couldn't get it. Actually, he's 4.9. I went for Cole Palmer. Oh, 
Oh, the palm, the palm man. So, uh, n- yeah. so now I have Salah, but look at the state of my midfield. Yeah. It's yeah. Thomas Suchek, Cole Palmer, James Ward Prowse. Just what a what a party that would be. And yeah. then you've got Martin Odegaard, who will probably become Saka in pretty short order, <laughs> right. and Mo Salah. You've got one player you really want in there. But <laughs> I'm here to tell you, maybe you can have everything. Maybe you can. Assume Odegaard becomes Saka. I've got Saka, Sala, Watkins, Alvarez, Holland, Trippier, Udagi, Cash. Who else do you want? Yeah, I mean, I think that's I think that's fair. I mean, I was trying to just follow your team in my head as you were rattling <laughs> off like nine players. But yeah, it sounds it sounds good. Um, yeah, I think that it's uh I, I don't I'm, think it's I'm sus- sort of, it doesn't feel sustainable as a as like a as a long term. But no, but that's that's fine. Yeah. You can't not to, not enough cash in the midfield. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I think. I think it's pretty tricky to not to go with or to go without Salah right now. And 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 as you know, the the theme of this week's pod, which um, you know, I mean, we'll we'll, we'll go into a proper thematic discussion here in a little bit but uh, the real problem is yeah uh, you kind of do have to drop everything and and, and sacrifice some players to get Sal I think because uh it's just a really nice run the next three matches in particular Forest at home Luton away Brentford at home and Liverpool are in the Europa League it's just not something where they're going to be sacrificing the top players for Europa League matches right the Premier League is going to be the priority so uh, especially with them uh, Monty what appears to be a serious title challenge this season um uh, you know we'll see i mean i don't know if i still don't know if i have enough faith in their defense but we'll, we'll whatever right at the very least they're they're near the top of the table a very very serious champions league push clearly um and uh yeah and and darwin is playing better too i mean you know i, I thought he played well when he came off the bench and uh you know he did really well with the international break as well so i think um We've said this before, but sometimes Klopp players, it takes them a season, right, to sort of get yeah. into his, get into his. For him to style. understand, yeah, for him to understand a role that he can play, as opposed to just go and be the the stri- central striker, yeah. for this incredible Liverpool team was probably yeah. too big a shoes to fill for him. And now that he just yeah. has a clear understanding of what's the role, you're not, you don't have to be the whole attack here. Yeah, uh, I so I agree, he's benefited from that time. Well, I think that um, I think it's gonna be pretty hard to go without without Sal over the next couple of weeks. I think that, uh, yeah, it would. It, I you know also I think the captaincy is a big factor here because uh, you have Holland uh, away to um, uh, Man City or away to Man United. They they played Old Trafford uh, in in game week ten. So it just like you have Sal at home uh, and then you've got. Man City away, and so it's it feels like it's gonna be a pretty extreme. Well, I mean, first of all. Holland could Holland can score a brace in any match, and that that's that still holds true. I mean, the fact he scored a hat trick at Old Trafford last season, I yeah, if I remember exactly. So like, it's 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 perfectly valid to to just continue captaining him every week because his floor is so high. I mean, he had a, a well, actually, he scored a great goal. I, I felt like he barely touched the ball after that. Like I, I can't remember him yep. doing anything after uh, after he scored that goal. But uh, but it was it was really it was nice to see him score an outside the box goal like that too. It was like really well 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 placed, you know. From outside, yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, kind of a strange match. I mean, uh, Bre- Brentford were really or Brentford uh, Brighton were really on Brighton. top in the second. Yeah, Bre- Brighton uh, really on top in the second half of that match. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean they're another one of those teams that have a really nice run of fixtures kicking off in game week ten. It has been quite a while. It feels like since we talked about Brighton, the start of the season was all Brighton. It was like, how do I get five Brighton players into my squad? <laughs> yeah. And then they had this, yeah. this, this terrible run where they just played numerous difficult matches and, and some matches that in hindsight, it's clear just how difficult they were, like playing away to Everton. I'm not sure. Or Aston Villa, excuse me. I don't know if I was quite ready for how difficult that Aston Villa match would be. And now, um, and we saw it again with West Ham, right? I mean, that's a, it's a pretty good West Ham team and Villa just, crushed them so it's yeah. uh you know they're 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 playing really well i mean i sort of have my own version of the solid problem right now which is uh, how do i get ollie watkins um i don't have a, an easy way to get watkins into my squad without taking a minus four which is kind of how i'm leaning at the moment um i've had a i've had a good game week uh, i'm up about a million spots already which which is um you know 
Uh, it was kind of it was the game week I've been sort of hoping for for a while, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, some up up like a which again it shows you by the way, but just being fifteen points above the average or whatever is enough to go a million places uh, mm-hmm. this this early on in the season. So it's it's not over for anybody who's not doing so hot to start this start the year. Uh, and I'm still not, but it's it's nice it's a nice comeback. And you and I both have three players tomorrow. Uh, in Madison, Sun, and uh, Yudogi, uh, and yeah, for you it's the double farewell. Uh, for me, it's the uh, it's the come on, boys, let's let's keep this the going. Team is stronger yeah. than ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. stocks yeah, exactly. will rise high. <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually am probably going to drop. I almost did it today. In fact, I was debating because they, they're both going to change the price. I actually, I could only have done it today, and um, the prices are changing as as we record, and so I'm just going to not do it uh mm-hmm. which is i was going to move sun to saka and then alvarez to watkins but i mm-hmm. haven't quite decided if i'm willing to give up an alvarez yet the other move would be the minus four move which is sun to saka that's that's a move i just really want to do this week it also frees up a bunch of cash right frees up like 0.8 million um so sun to saka and uh and then probably Mbomo down to some 5 million ish player. And then I can move uh, Carlton Morris to Watkins. And that just seems like the structure of that move makes yeah. a lot more sense. And so that's kind of how I'm leaning. Um, I honestly wish I just never gotten sun. I just, if I just held Saka, I'd be in a much, much better position. Yeah. You know? I, I, I was <laughs> thinking about that as I was moving sun to Sala. I, I still generally like, a lot of my thought process going into my game week eight wild card. Yeah. <clears throat> but it was the Spurs Luton match that I look back on and I'm just like, why? Because uh it it, it was the the sun being automatic and everybody's fantasy team just blocked my at least my thinking in terms of the necessity yeah. of Sala. And yeah. it, or I was just blinkered because it was it was still, and we we talked about it on the podcast about how yeah. clear it was for anybody wild guarding basically after game week, whatever, that you just get Sala. And um, you know, Sun's still a great player, and I expect yeah. him to uh, score a ton of fantasy points in the coming months. Hopefully but tomorrow. It's yeah. just the level of yeah, so it's in particular tomorrow, but the 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 consistency that Sala is showing, and I think it's sort of reflective of the conversation around Liverpool of well, who in Liverpool should I get that's not Sala? Should it be yeah. Jota, Luis Diaz, and uh, um, Sabazlai? And you're like, uh, and I'm 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 wondering who to get because they have so many freaking good players. Yep. Yep. Uh, which then says, well, this is a really, really, really good team. And yep. Salah is a really, really good player. So even though he's 12, 12.5 plus, you got to You got to get him. You got to get him. Yeah. He's good. The team's good. It's all pointing toward fantasy gold dust. I know it would be nice. I, I, I don't think there's any, I, there are no cheap fun midfielders in that. Uh, yeah. I don't want Harvey Elliott, McAllister, um, Interesting. McAllister uh, really just disappeared from fantasy, didn't he? That move from Brighton to Liverpool ended mm-hmm. him fantasy wise. He's actually, I think he started every single match so far for Liverpool. If he was on pens, it'd be a whole different story. But of course, Salah's not going to give up those goals. Uh, but just the you know, zero goals and one assist so far for him. And, and yeah, I think I'm with you. I mean, Zabazle almost feels, well, he's actually, I mean, Zabazle is kind of, he's, he's 7 million though. It's He's actually an interesting spot where he's, He's too expensive to be considered, right? He's yeah, sort of right. right. It's he's a, got something it's to, to offer. Yeah. yeah, something to offer. But at seven million, not what you can go to, like seven three and get Jared Bowen, right? Who is another mm-hmm. player that we should uh, talk mm-hmm. more about later. I, you know, kind of an own goalish goal, but it, it's it's an own goal. It's like you know, it, I mean, of course, it, of course, it was counted as a goal, and it's it's it, the the shot was on target. Maybe he would have scored no matter what happened. But um, it's you know, it's the kind of goal that comes from being very aggressive, though, being very involved in the in the, mm-hmm. in the play. And so, um, when you would do when you when you were taking a lot of shots, occasionally you're just going to get lucky, right? And the ball's just going to ricochet in for you. And so, um, I think um, yeah, he's if I just if I can convince myself to go without Saka for a little while longer, uh, it would actually be quite, quite a bit easier to just go son to um, Jared Bowen. And then I could go Morris to Watkins. So another, another possibility. Think, yeah. Yeah. Do you think Saka could really hurt you that bad? 
Well, his ownership mm-hmm. is high, and he plays uh, when when healthy. He plays virtually every match. He plays, mm-hmm. you know, the full ninety in in every match. He's got yeah. just. I mean, you know, even in this match, I thought he. Was, I don't think he was amazing in the um, Arsenal Chelsea match, and I mean, Arsenal weren't really either until the very end. Uh, mm-hmm. But even that match, he sneaks his way into an assist right he's just sort of he's just so consistent like ridiculously consistent and um i mean you can sort of see it right going back before the injury nine points 13 6 4 8 3 10 right so two double digit returns a nine pointer an eight pointer he's only 8.5 million his ownership is crazy high right so if he ever does explode in a match then you're just like your game week is you know, yeah. crushed. So, um, so that's, that's kind of where I'm leaning. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't like, I don't want to make it sound like it's like some kind of fear based move. Like, Oh, like I'm just, sure. you know, like it's like super defensive. I just, I just you think want he's those points. Worth, I want those points. And I think, I think I do think he's worth owning and, uh, it's, and it's a nice run for them too. You could maybe wait two weeks to do it. I guess that would be the, the argument would be to just wait because, uh, they do play Newcastle away in game week 11, which is certainly going to be a, a tough fixture for them uh and then after that it, it opens up quite a lot uh burnley brentford wolves luton it feels like everyone's playing luton like <laughs> it's like I said, it feels like everyone's played luton to like twice like i feel like luton's just constantly everyone is like <laughs> luton is like everyone's next match somehow it's like the uh-huh. one after this week is always a luton somehow i'm always looking at players i'm like oh well they play luton in two weeks i better uh-huh. uh better target that picture. yeah it's like the harlem globe trotters playing the washington generals or something luton are the, just the uh yeah npc team that we just beat up on and boost our pros with yeah although that's what forrest thought and then boom luton uh Claws back. I could not believe I was stunned that that match ended 2-2. That was when incredible. You got, when you got Cooper driving your, your clown car, then uh no. anyway. <laughs> I, I cannot speak. Extreme <laughs> Jose Mourinho voice. I cannot speak. Okay. You you have a you have a problem with Cooper though? He kept nub last year. I mean he's not the best. You know, his look is is unique, you know, like his actual the the look. <laughs> I but have like, no issue. You know, yeah. I have no issue with the man's appearance. Uh okay. I okay. mostly have an I issue with his Okay. He he's so corny in press conferences. It's okay. just like platitude okay. after platitude. Yeah. And yeah. he never ever says anything of substance. And I would be delighted if people just at me uh on Twitter yeah. with substantive comments that he has well uh, made over yeah. the years. And to be fair to him, he kind of screwed me this week because uh <laughs> this 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 year is it just it just seems to get worse and worse every year. The just the unannounced injuries, right? Absolutely no news at all at any point that Callum Hudson Odoi was uh was gonna be out until December. That was just uh Oh, fun! Let's drop this on uh, on Saturday uh, when yeah, he's Friday not when he's dump. not yeah when he's not in the eighteen. <laughs> and I was like, oh, uh-huh. I, you know, I, it's just it's sort of sort of uh, kind of annoying. Uh, I, I probably would have actually made a transfer this week if I knew that was going to happen because uh, I, I do think that Samikas is a really uh, appealing player. I mean, he, he didn't have a great match. He did get subbed early in that match as well, but they don't really have a ton of options, despite what Klopp has said in some of those press conferences about, uh, oh, you know, uh, Gomez can play at left back. Sure. Come Who, on. Who's just sets, set the yeah. game on fire when he came out of the pitch. Yeah. Not exactly. And then, yeah. he, and then he named some other guy who, and I'm not a Liverpool supporter, so I don't know right. no like someone, who he was talking like the, about. Someone from the 18s or something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, and so I guess we've seen him play well. And I he, he's on corners. And I mean, the, 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 but the whole point is that he's four point five million. And it's Liverpool are one of the best teams in the league. And it's not often you get a 4.5 million defender who, who mm-hmm. actually could get you attacking returns from one of the best teams in the league. And so that it's kind of open and shut from that perspective, right? It's just very, um, and so, you know, I'm still, I'm still kind of looking at him. I mean, the other, the, the, I could honestly just tinker at the margins this game week again as well. So anyway, that's enough about my, enough about my team, certainly enough about your team, Brandon, my God, plenty. Just, uh, yes, plenty. Uh, so let's talk quickly about our UK trip. It's two and a half weeks away. We will be flying. Uh, yeah. Two and a half weeks now. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. We're, uh, we're, we'll be there for the uh, November 10th, 11th, 12th weekend. Um, we actually get in, uh, we fly a Wednesday, so we'll be there for, for a nice, nice long stretch, go back on Monday. Um, so, uh, we'll be there for the, it's the final game week before the next international break. Um, and uh, we're going to a bunch of matches. We're going to go see West Ham uh, for the Europa League match on Thursday. 
going to go to Palace on Saturday. Then we're going to the Bridge on Sunday to watch Chelsea Man City. Really excited about all three of those matches. And then mm. on November 10th, that Friday at 7 p.m., we are hosting an always cheating meetup. So mark your calendars, November 10th. It's, uh, or, or 10 November, I think, Brandon, as they, yes. they at least write it that way in England. I don't know if they <laughs> say it that way too, but uh, the 10th of November, that's a Friday. Mark it on your calendar. And uh, we hope to see you there. It's, we're going to be in the London Bridge area. We, are, we have a, a venue. Um, it looks like it's all basically done and dusted, but we just haven't signed anything yet. And so I don't want to say in the pod. Um, yeah where we're going to be until that, until that's locked in. But so if you know the London bridge area, if you know borough market, it's going to be um, near that. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll, we'll uh, likely start things around 7 PM. So for folks coming straight from work, I hope that is good. And I understand the London bridge uh, tube station is, is convenient to get uh, convenient or not. You better be there because <laughs> yeah, Josh exactly. and I are going to be there and it's going to be a blast. First time in three years. <laughs> it's it, longer. Three and a half yeah. years. My God, how long was this COVID? I don't know. I guess it's still going on, but three and a half and years. Remember, that's crazy. I want everyone to come just so I can meet them and, and speak to them. But yeah. uh, I remember our friend Chancer Dan, who many would know from Twitter, said it might sound weird on its face to just randomly go to some pub to meet a bunch of strangers who are fantasy managers, but trust me, this is Dan talking. Yeah. Uh, it's worth it. It's a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so I always oh, have fun at these meetups. And, and I, if you're, if you're free November 10th, uh, details uh, will be posted. We'll reiterate them a million times on this yeah. pod, all over our socials. But ho- and hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to officially announce the venue too. So really excited about that. And yeah, I mean, I just, we people have come from, we already actually know people are coming from outside the country. So that's, yeah. that's sort of, yeah. that's going to be really fun. And, I remember our, remember our friends, the, the, the leads, the leads ladies, Brandon, I hope they come down again from Leeds. I know it's oh, a long yes. trip. Having taken a train totally, from yeah. Leeds at, uh, last, yeah. last time around, we came back from Manchester. We somehow ended up in <laughs> yeah. Leeds. We went further north before we go south. I know what we a serious commitment that journey. was. Yeah, exactly. It was a long trip. Uh, but yeah. anyway, so hopefully we get to, we get to meet a lot of you there and uh, more to come on that front. Um, we'll also be talking about it on our Patreon. So if you want to support the podcast on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash always cheating. Uh, you get an extra podcast each week. We, uh, have our discord. It's been very active. It stays very active all the time and including really throughout the whole off season. I felt like it stayed really active this time around. Uh, I've got merch, uh, at the higher pledge tiers. There's uh, just a lot of different ways you can support, but even at the very lowest pledge level, you get access to that discord. So, uh, go to patreon.com slash always cheating to, uh, say thank you, uh, for this, this free weekly podcast. And uh, I got a bonus pot as well. Uh, so, uh, let's take a break, Brandon. We'll get back and we'll talk more about this big game week 10 fixed return. There's no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform that you need to build yours. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it makes hiring all in one place so easy because Indeed does the hard work for you. They show you the candidates whose resumes on Indeed fit your description immediately after you post so you can hire faster. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash sports. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash sports. That's indeed.com slash blue wire sports and support the show by saying that you heard it on this podcast. Indeed.com slash blue wire sports. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. This Halloween, mystery lurks around every corner. Bundle up with Disney Plus and Hulu. What are you scared of? The dark. It's spine tingling fun on Disney Plus with Haunted Mansion and Goosebumps. I'm going to need you to spread the word. Then feel the bone chilling terror on Hulu with the Boogeyman and American Horror Story Delicate. Something's happening to me. The Disney Bundle with Hulu and Disney Plus. All of these and more streaming this month. Plans starting at $9.99 a month. 18 plus only. Access content from each service separately. Offer valid for eligible subscribers only. Terms apply. Apple Card is the credit card created by Apple. You earn 3% daily cash back up front when you use it to buy a new iPhone 15, AirPods, or any products at Apple. 
And you can automatically grow your daily cash at 4.15% annual percentage yield when you open a high-yield savings account. Apply for Apple Card in the Wallet app on iPhone. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility. Savings accounts by Goldman Sachs Bank USA. Member FDIC. Terms apply. All right, Ben, we're back. The big Game Week 10 fixture shift. I mean, these things are always a moving target, right? One good, it's sort of an interesting, even if you sort of, it kind of depends on how far you you sort of cast your your fixture eye, right? Like some people like to look seven, eight, ten weeks ahead. Some people like to look at like just the next one or two. Uh, I find that five or six is about where I want to look. Any longer than that, I just feel like it's it's not really worth doing. Uh, maybe in a wild card, you could consider it. But I think in general, I'm kind of uh, you know, yeah. you're not lining yourself up for game week 38 just yet. Um, not you know, not uh, yet, not yet. But I do feel like sometimes people do kind of plan <laughs> a little. I I think farther <laughs> than you need to because ultimately. Yes. Any move, you can just kind of get there with regular transfers too. Yes. And I, you know, you can right. kind of, you can kind of um, have like a well balanced team that doesn't actually target the fixtures right in front of you the way mm-hmm. it should. Um, so anyway, so but a lot of people have held off on their wild card until game week ten because of this really nice run of fixtures that that kicks off then. And so uh, some of the teams, and it's an interesting mix of of squads. It's not just the we talked about Liverpool and and. Sala a little bit already, but uh, Arsenal, I think we mentioned them in the context of Sala or excuse me, soccer earlier on in the pod. Mm-hmm. Uh, really nice run for them over the next uh, six, including Brandon game week 15. Luton. Who else? <laughs> Luton town. Everyone, everyone's playing Luton. Hey, guess who's, <laughs> guess who's playing them in game week uh, 13, Brandon uh, crystal palace Luton. There it is. It's just <laughs> there for everybody. Uh, they're playing everybody three times this year. I don't know how it worked out that way. Uh, but uh, so I think Palace being at the top is kind of interesting. Just I'm just sorting by just, you know, if you look by just fix. I, oh, so I, I was saying, by the way, about how far you cast. I think five or six weeks is, is, a, is like roughly when mm-hmm. um, I, I think it's appropriate to look. Um, and so uh, when you sort of do that, then you start by difficulty. The a handful of teams pop up at the top that. Uh, a lot of people don't have in their squads already. And that's really why a wild card becomes key for a lot of people, because uh, I look at my own squad and the top five, 16, the top six teams uh, are, I have, I think I've got like one player across all six of them. <laughs> so that's, that's a little nerve wracking, right? It's like, okay, how am I going to, how about I start to solve this with, with some transfers? I guess two, if you caught a stupid on, I have no idea when he's going to be back. And, Part of me is just like, you know, I just just I, I the double up with with Newcastle is going so well that I'm like, all right, let's mm-hmm. just keep let's just keep rolling with this for a while. And Why um, not? yeah, exactly. They do play Arsenal in 11. So that would be the one time when maybe you don't want to have that double up because um, I, I do that. That feels like a both teams will score uh, type of match. But uh, yeah. but with, with Trippier, it doesn't really matter. Uh, he's obviously fixed your proof. Maybe the double up is, is a little less appealing for 11. Trippier is just let's let's take a moment just to admire yeah. what this man has done in the yeah. last four matches. He has delivered six assists. Yep. Uh <laughs> Which yeah. is, it's ridiculous. Which is wild. Uh, yeah. uh, three double digit hauls in the last four. And yeah. then the, the non is, is just a straight up cold as ice six pointer yep. against West Ham, which he got a clean sheet wipe. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, I mean, just as an, uh, as an aside, Josh, you've got the, how are you feeling about that? Char burn double up versus Trippier. You come out ahead yeah. uh, essentially this yeah. weekend. Yeah, I mean, but do, do, you, do you have thoughts about Trippier long term? Well, um, it's just hard for me to get. I mean, this is this is the, this is the, really the problem. It's just how do you um, get everybody, and you just you just can't. Like, I could either target uh, Ollie Watkins or I could target Trippier. I don't know how I could target both unless right. I just went com- utterly bare bones, right, and just everything was cut to the bone. And I I don't want to do that. And I think this week sort of showed why you can kind of get away with it uh, because um, I mean, I kind of looked out with honestly with Watkins and with Trippier just in terms of like kind of a few couple of points here at the margins uh, here and there with Trippier uh, not scoring as many points as um, uh, was it, who was it? Douglas Louise. Was he the one who had the, the brace yeah. today, which yeah. by the way, he scored in uh, five consecutive home matches now for Aston Villa. 
He's good. <laughs> he is good. And it's like, this is like the first match where I was like, oh, right. Like maybe we should occasionally talk about Douglas Louise, who <laughs> now has you know five, five goals on the season. Um, so I guess one of those goals must go back to the season before. But yeah, just remarkable at home. You can see it. 15 points in game week nine. Eight and seven, ten and five. These are all home home matches, home wins. Um, he he yeah. is he is aided by being the pen taker for Villa Mind. Sure, I, sure, but he is better than like your Luka Milivojevic's and whatnot. He's playing, yeah, yeah, and still, still. Uh, I think this is yeah. Is this non penalty XG? I think so. I think he's on three point two um, XG on the season. So not you know not not, not terrible. It's not like he's it's not like uh, one of those. Kind of who was that like central midfielder from a f- few seasons ago? Who um, that's like a long time ago now. He was the Watford uh, who had that like incredible start to the season. He was like a oh yeah like um, box to box kind of guy. I'm blanking um, on it, uh, Ed. Yeah, I'm blanking on it. I know the guy you're talking about. It, yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter. But but you know, sort of um, you, you could kind of tell it was unsustainable because it was just like a series of outside the box screamers, right? And it just like happened again and again and again. But I guess the thing about Louise is he almost he actually could have scored another goal today because he had that he had an, an outside the box screamer early on in that match that uh, that Ariola tipped away early on, and so. Uh, it was, uh, yeah. So any, anyway, why am I talking about Douglas Louise? I, oh, just because, uh, because he had two, it, it did knock, um, Watkins down one point. And, uh, but I think for me, I, I don't know. I feels like I can, I can kind of get away with it Trippier because outside of that insane Sheffield United match where, um, he had, I think like 75 points. I, I can't remember exactly. It was between 75 and a million. He had a lot of, a lot of points in that game. Um, I have been kind of getting there with with my my char, uh, my you know my char burn double up, and um, kind of happened again in in game week eight or game week nine, excuse me, where um, he got a, you know, he finished with two bonus, but he also had a yellow card, and so he finished on ten points, and char finished on seven, right? So it's like that's it's three points, but uh, you know he's two million cheaper, and so it's 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 kind of sure it's kind of acceptable. I mean, obviously, if they were both four point five or even five, it'd be like okay, maybe there's there's like a debate here, but because uh, it's just so hard to get there with with him, I'm I'm trying to just fade, and I I guess just hope. It, does, it doesn't keep happening. I don't know. I mean, I'm sort of looking ahead to the fixtures here. Uh, way to Wolves. I mean, he's probably going to keep a clean sheet in that one. Arsenal could be tricky. Chelsea could be tricky. Man United could be tricky. So I, I see maybe three opportunities in the next five matches where he won't destroy me with returns. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm, I'm just, I guess I'm just going to try to fade. Whereas Watkins feels like, sure. Watkins feels like, um, the, I mean, he's obviously the number one forward in the game right now. He's, um, I mean, he's above Holland. It's just incredible. He's having a great season. He scores any assists, right? So uh, again, another extremely high floor player like Saka, where it just feels like in any match, you're, it just feels like five points is like the fewest you're going to get yeah. from from Watkins. And even you know when when Luis scored that goal today, it was like, well, of course it was. Uh, you know, of course, it was Watkins on the left just rolling the ball out to him, and uh, but it just like you know, it's not like it's it's not luck, right? I mean, he just picks out a a great pass, right? And like, sure, just, he's yeah. just a very good I, I think in in that goal in particular, Watkins worked really well to get find a position within the eighteen yard box, right, and basically draw defenders, right, and receive that pass and know that there would be space behind him for Douglas Louis. So yeah. really well played on on his part. Brian asks, I think, a germane question here. Who is more important to get, Salah or Watkins? So imagine you're a manager who has neither. Yeah. Uh, we spent the first 30 minutes of this pod talking about how Mo Salah is just steamrolling this season magically. Yeah. Who's the first one you get? Yeah. Well, of course, Villa do play Luton Town. And game week ten, I, I think <laughs> I think half that the man again. I, I think I, somehow half the league plays Luton Town. Uh, the, uh, this in game week ten. I'm not sure how that's how that's happened. Uh, it's uh, yeah. I mean, like uh, Brentford, uh, they in theory play Chelsea away at Brentford, but somehow they're going to find a way to stick a Luton Town fixture in. It's a, sure. it's a midweek sure. double. Luton's going to jump in a bus and just uh, race <laughs> across oh. town. And- yeah, and play uh, exactly going to play some kind of. Uh, uh, behind closed doors match, but the fantasy <laughs> points are going to count or something. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's, so they play, they play Luton and 10 at home. It's, 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 it's tricky. I mean, 
I, I suppose you could argue, I was going to make the case that Sal is more important because uh, you're more likely to captain him kind of consistently, but maybe we just need to rethink Watkins and whether Watkins is a viable captain choice as well. I mean, talk, you know, because again, talk about that high floor. He's probably going to play all 90 in that Luton match, right? And so what a minimum you're getting five points from Watkins in that yeah. match and maybe, maybe a lot more. It's actually one of the reasons why I feel okay if I end up burning four this week, because it just feels like it's probably going to pay off almost immediately. And it, I like the structure more. And so, so sometimes there's, there's minus fours that just make sense and, and it's just sort of okay to do it. And so maybe, maybe that is the answer. If there is a, I, I never like to do the like cheeky get both. Right. Cause it's mm-hmm. like, well, it's easy, easy to say, but like, but like if, if there was a way that you could get both by like only burning four, I do see, yeah. I can see the value of that. If uh, you know, I don't, I don't think burning eight or 12, that's, that feels like too much. In a case like that, I would just wait an extra week and and not burn that many points to, to make it happen. Um, but I think that with, it does feel really important to get both. So I guess I am going to cheat a little bit on the answer sure. here because so I, yeah. I, I agree with you. I think that's the answer is get both. And you use that as a, what's the more sensible way to get both is yep. the, is the more sensible way based on your current team structures. It's easier for me to get to Watkins first and then yep. I get Sala in one or two weeks, then do that. If it's, easier to move son to sala and uh, etc and get sala first and get watkins a couple weeks down the down the line i think the reason why we're underlining both of these players so much is we expect them to keep scoring points yep. so it's not just a matter of get them all in for game week 10 it's you're gonna have to get both of these guys in at some point so what's the plan to get them both in in the most sensible way based on your team structure yeah and i you you never need to have any player in one. I, I think double game weeks maybe are a slightly different case, right? Because sometimes the double game week can be so extreme in terms of outcomes. But I think for like normal 10 fixture game weeks, I think you're right. I think it's more about following the kind of logic, like just fixing. Yeah, it's like, does the, I mean, because like in my case, it's like a, a, a transfer a transfer for if I can turn Morris mm-hmm. into Watkins, not only is it, I mean, I, I do have Saul already, so like I don't have to resolve that part of it, but it's like not only does it um help me target game week nine, but it also kind of solves a Morris problem, which is that I just want to start yeah. him all the time. Um, at or like re, like barely ever, honestly. Like I, I think he's a good player to be. I and I've sort of come away from the last few weeks thinking, damn, this guy's this guy's pretty good. Um, but still, it's it's still it's still Luton Town. And even though they do get to play every team in the league three or four times, uh, I do think that uh, <laughs> the unfortunately sales his, alone can yeah, keep these guys really solid. Exactly. But somehow he only gets his points only count once. It doesn't feel fair to me, right? I feel like if he's gonna play it's not right. three, three times in a game week, they should count as triple points. And I don't know how I, I guess they're averaging yeah. them. I'm not sure how they've they've done the math on that yet. Um, but yeah. it's a you better at reply official FPL. <laughs> yeah, uh, what's going on? Every team has played Luton three times already. Why, why are Morris's points so low? <laughs> Just from appearance points alone, it should be higher. Um, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, uh, so yeah, I think, yeah, follow your, follow the structure. I mean, Sala is sort of, he defies structure. I mean, I guess the other question that we haven't, uh, talked about yet, I think just cause you and I, aren't into it and it's just not our style, but it, I mean, the, uh, the one thing you could do is you could turn Erlen Holland into Ollie Watkins and that will, would certainly free up enough money to, to, to bring in, um, Sala and, and Watkins and you wouldn't have to take a hit in most cases. So, um, is that, is that something that we could consider? Why am I, um, you know, if I'm not going to be camping Holland week in and week out, why am I holding on to him quite so tightly? I guess would be the question. I don't think I've ever said this on the podcast before in this is our ninth season, but I don't really feel like talking about it. <laughs> it's just like, it just it makes you uncomfortable. Uh, it's well, the problem. I mean, Can we just, change the subject? Well, please. it's just, yeah, it's, it's tricky <laughs> because, uh, well, you've already, you've already made your move. Thankfully, so you don't, you don't have to worry I'm about done. it, but yeah, I, don't I know, thought about it, but yeah. it just, I'm interested. Okay. To, to be, to be actually honest, I'm interested in this conversation because I'm afraid of how much it makes sense Yes, to get rid of yeah. Holland sort of conversation because 
Yeah. It's, you know, you, you mentioned it in your sort of analysis of the Brighton Manchester city match. Holland just doesn't last season. He was famous for not touching the ball and still scoring six goals in a match. Now he's yeah. famous for not touching the ball and you don't even know he's on the pitch it's, and uh, it's, it's, it's growing tiresome. Yeah. I mean, it's so ridiculous. Like literally if I moved like not even like figuring out what I do with this money, but if I'd literally just moved Holland to Watkins I have 6.2 million in my in my team. I could actually move Holland to Watkins and I could turn Callan Hudson Adoy into uh you know into I don't know Saka I guess and then I'd still have enough money to bring in Trippier for somebody else. Like it's kind of insane. Ah, but you know I don't know. So this it's, is what I yeah. was thinking in yeah. my wild card when I didn't yeah. bring Sala in. Yeah, I thought, oh, look at my team looks like picture perfect. Yes, if I don't spend that solid money, yep. same logic applies to this Holland thing. Yep. Do we really believe Holland is just gonna not, not crater every non-owner season at some point in the next couple of months? It still feels like he will. Um, it, yeah, I don't know. It's. Uh, I don't, I but don't that's, know. But that's managing I don't know out of fear. Not, I, I yeah, don't necessarily love fear. that yeah. viewpoint. In general, I am not inclined to drop high floor players, um, mm-hmm. right? This is why I don't really want to move Alvarez to Watkins. In some ways, it feels like I'm, I, it's, even though I think that Watkins is a slightly higher, higher ceiling based on what we've seen from him this season, it's not so much higher that it feels like a totally logical move, right? Like Alvarez is just getting like, eight, nine points practically every week, right? It's like, it's just remarkable how many times he's done that uh, so far this season. I mean, he's got, I guess he's done eight or nine, three times. uh, And then you can toss in a 14 pointer as well. Um, And uh, I mean, a couple of blanks too, but that's, that's, that's normal, but I mean, you know, he's, he's got four goals and happens five assists. Happens to lots of guys, John. Happens, happens, yeah, happens to everybody uh, from time to time. Uh, but he's, he's seven million. He's got four goals and five assists. Saka at 8.5 has four goals and four assists, right? So he's got more, he's, he's, he's outperforming the player that I run, like trying to like rearrange my team to, to, to bring in. Right. And so what, what am I, what are we doing here? Whereas, and then the, the, you know, the problem with, I mean, the, the problem with, with Holland is just that he's 14 million and it's it's just so it's so it's just too much, but again he's got he's got nine goals on the season. It's like it's not like he has nothing. It's he not enough. Yeah, but it is. It I doesn't, want more. It doesn't feel like enough because when you look at the spread of points, right? So we have you have the twenty pointer, right? Yeah, the twenty pointer in game week four where they played Fulham at home without without a with a Polino, right? The kind of mm-hmm. like Fulham and, and disarray. Mm-hmm. Since then, it's been a six, uh, you know, goal, no bonus, six pointer, goal, no bonus, six pointer, blank, blank, and then goal, two bonus, eight pointer, which again, I captained him. I got half as many points as Sala, I sort of kicking myself all Saturday for 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 going with him although I, I still feel fine about it honestly because I, I when they scored two early goals i was like oh they're gonna score like nine in this match i was kind of shocked mm-hmm. that i ended up two two one would have been in the very very low range of possible match <laughs> outcomes when they scored yeah. that second goal i think that i was watching this interesting video on tifo irl's youtube channel about uh rivers of the Serbia and uh, what what does he do why yeah is he such a good manager? Yeah. And one of the points I thought was interesting that they hit upon is there was the spread of when goals are scored for Brighton or against Brighton. Yep. And it's clear based on the way those are spread that Deserby is making so many in-match alterations to his tactics. Yeah. And invariably after halftime, they are tighter in the goals conceded and better in the goal production. So it does make sense then reflecting on that city match of like, oh yeah, yeah. We thought it was going to be like a similar Aston Villa esque explosion by city, but yeah. Zerbi tightened up a few things, changed yep. a few of his players positions. And uh, I thought that was just interesting insight to, to think about when you see uh, Brighton as the opposition. Well, I think it's extremely interesting. I mean, it makes me wonder about, um, uh, like, like Ferguson, like I know that Ferguson's skill was more like man management, but like, I, mm-hmm. like you don't actually hear a lot about in person, um, uh, in person is not the right word, but like, you know, you don't, you don't hear a lot about like, um, man management. Uh, ma- no, no. About like, uh, in, like in, in match tactical oh, like, adjustments. Sure. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Um, and, uh, 
don't know. It's interesting. I mean, Pep, Pep well, yeah, is, cause just, cause Pep cause is really these... like that, right? He's sort of, and, and he tends to trust his 11, right? You see, there's, I feel like there's a lot of matches where you're like, man, it's, it's, you know, they're, yeah. they're, it's a one nil match and they're getting hammered. I can't believe he hasn't made a transfer. Yeah. He hasn't made a sub yet. And then, uh, the 88th minute, you know, the dams finally break or whatever. And it's like, sort of like he really does. He trusts his game plan going into the match. Whereas um, it's really interesting. Yeah. Kind of I don't think sort of you thing. hear a lot about it. The in game tactics as well, because you just got these like retired, like psychopaths, like Roy yeah. Keane or, uh, you know, freaking Phil Neville or Tim Howard, just being like, Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not, not big brains uh, as far as, <laughs> commentary goes <laughs> uh all right well let's 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 take another question oh wait I'm putting okay. everybody to the sword today yeah, I, I know exactly i'm not I, i'm not responsible for these anymore because we get every, every time this happens that we get emails from people um so all right so some of the best fixtures uh palace i don't know what to say about palace really i mean they're uh there's no players in our t- from an attacking perspective that you can trust um and even defensively, I don't know. It's like they're hard to evaluate coming out of this 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 most recent match, right? The Newcastle one. It's a let's 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 just shelve. I can't. I you said you didn't want to talk about the Holland thing that we that we did, but in this case, I really I really feel like I need another week. Let's see how they play. They they host Spurs in game week ten, so that's not really a match where you'd want to have a number of Palace players anyway, right? So let's give it another week, and then we can. You know, we're going to put a put a pin in Crystal Palace mm-hmm. for the moment. Um, I think Brighton are, are a, a slightly more interesting. Another team that has a really nice run of fixtures ahead. Finally, um, Fulham, Everton, Sheffield, Forest, Brentford. No Luton, surprisingly. Or I have to talk to this. You know, we're going to figure out what's going on there. But uh, a nice a nice run for Brighton over the next handful of weeks. Uh, I thought Matoma played well uh, in the in the Man City match and um, had some chances. Um, what's interesting is like the way, uh, you know, well back leaving. I don't know. It's like, I, I don't, I still don't understand how things work up front, like how it works with Ferguson and, <laughs> yeah. uh, and well back Ferguson and, start more. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. And then, but they have this great, uh, so much depth too. like the players they can bring on and yeah, it's, just, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, there's just a lot of really, um, it, it's just, it's just, a, I mean, the player who scored the goal was, um, he, I think he came on Fetty. as a sub, right? Didn't did, did Fetty did he come on or was he already? I can't remember if he started. The I match. believe Doesn't he matter. came on at at halftime. Here, let me let me pull up the uh, the actual fixture ticker here. So no, no, he came. No, yeah, sorry. he played twenty five. minutes. He came on yeah, at the sixty six yeah, minutes. Sorry, yeah. reading foot mob wrong. Yeah, so he was a sub. You're right. So yeah, you thought. I mean, and Cisa, of course, is injured now. But yeah, it's just there are a lot of listen. Everybody likes bright. We ever. <laughs> Man, I'm like, uh, I, I want to keep calling them Brentford on today's pomper. And I don't know why. Maybe because I'm finally feeling good about Brentford again. They they had like a great match. It was like they kept a clean sheet. Every goal they scored was an absolute banger. It was like a really, uh, like. Burnley will do that to a club for sure. I guess so. But they, they were still nice goals. And uh, uh, Bomo, thankfully, I finally finally got something out of my my man, uh, Brian MB. Um, so I think, the, I think that uh, certainly you could consider uh, Batoma, I think that he is, um, another, another pretty high floor player when the fixtures are good. Maybe he's not quite as like fixture proof as some of the other players, but he's, he's still, he's cheap, right? I mean, you know, he's, he's another enabler price person. I mean, you could move someone like Sun. like if you, again, if you're looking for, for affordable, more affordable players to, to fund a solid move, someone like a Matoma might make sense for you, right? Sun, Sun to oh, Matoma yeah. frees up 3 million. Yeah, in game week eleven, I have exact money. I just need to hang on to do James Ward Prowse to Matoma, yeah. and that could, uh, looking at my my weird my weirdo midfield, would make yeah. me feel better. So I'm yeah. f- in full support of this Matoma promotion. Something's going to happen. Someone's going to r- drop uh, in the next. Uh, you might have to make that. Like you might have to do another farewell. Uh, thing like you have to do it like Saturday morning. <laughs> well, I'll do a joint farewell. Sorry, I, do yeah. you mind if I also invite uh, James yeah, Ward Prowse to James this Ward outing Prowse too? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Arsenal have a nice run. We talked about that already. Uh, West Ham again. Again, uh, I don't really read too much into the Villa match today because it feels like uh, 
uh, almost everyone's struggling when they when they had there. I mean, the, a, a very good a Brighton team struggled there, you know, a handful of weeks ago too. So, um, but they have a really another a, a nice run themselves. Uh, some nice home matches in particular, Everton and Forest in two of the next three. Uh, Brentford away in 11, Burnley away in 13. I mean, Burnley is kind of up there with Luton in terms of just, it feels like a, a match where you really do want to have an attacking player, you know, when they, when they play, uh, when they play Burnley. So, I don't know. I feel like um, you have, I guess, do you have, two you have three right because you've got you're, you're you're maxed out right do you have areola um yeah and, yep, suchek yep. ward prowse and areola so i'm yep. triple yep. west ham which may have been the weirdest thing i did on my wild card yeah and what do you think about jared bowen i mean i, you, I don't know if you really kicked around the idea of having him in your wild card or not he's he's having a great season he is um i agree i guess you put him in the same conversation as matoma uh, mm-hmm. in just relentless attacking players who I think have a a fairly high floor. Yeah. So do I, I think an interesting question is, do you like Bowen better than Matoma? I don't know. I, I think ultimately I'd like to have a Brighton player over a West Ham player just for f- sheer fantasy output. Yeah. Uh, so what does, does Bowen use up a slot that I'd rather have for, for another guy is, is yeah, maybe that's a different an interesting, question. that's an interesting question. Yeah. Whether you just would rather just have Matoma and, and, and just fade, fade Bowen. Cause again, you cannot have everybody unless you sell Holland, then you can have everybody. Then you can, <laughs> you can have uh, the, the greatest team you've ever dreamed of. Yeah. And, and until he, which will all be fine until he scores 20 points uh, at home to Bournemouth yeah. in game week 11. Bowen has answered that question, though, of could I just get away with having James Ward-Prowse as my quote-unquote coverage yeah. for West Ham? And the answer is no. Because, like, in and you mentioned this in talking about the goal that Bowen scored against um, against uh, Aston Villa, is just, like, that relentlessness, the, yep. the willingness to just go for it. And Ward-Prowse is playing a more elegant sort of position. And Bowen's job is just to go out there and yeah. and drive that ball toward toward the goal mouth. I know. The Ward-Prowse had one of those moments in today's match. It's like one of those – it's like <laughs> nothing more annoying than like when there's a – there's a there was a, you know, a handball – and then they had to do a VAR review to make sure it wasn't inside the box, which it very clearly wasn't. You could tell kind of immediately that it wasn't. And um, and then there was like the setup, and then the you know the the referee is telling everybody to move back and make sure everything's in place. And then West Ham, mm-hmm. really, like the whole sequence takes like three and a half minutes, to, you know, from like handball to yeah. to shot, and then gets the ball immediately just boots it, you know, right, right into the, uh, right into the defense, uh, you know, get recycles play and we just get started. It's like, it's yeah. so much, you know, drama and that lead up to genius you know, at work. It should yeah. be like flashing on the screen. Yeah. So, um, in terms of bad fixtures, uh, Chelsea finally have a kind of tough run, um, which, uh, I, if they play Brentford in 10 and then, but then after that, it's, it's, it's very rough. Uh, Spurs, Man City, Newcastle, Brighton, Man United, about as bad as it gets for, for them. And so I think that, um, I mean, but I do think, I, I still think your, your Palmer move is fine because he's, he's, you know, he's cheap and apparently he's on pens and I still feel pretty good about him as a kind of long-term starter. I mean, at least until, until they get kind of like back to, back to full health, I feel like you can, you could kind of pencil him into that squad. Totally. Pochettino has been crying out for just like basic levels of competency in yeah. the attack for Chelsea. And yeah. Cole Palmer is just like, let me bring my expertise from sitting on the bench at city. And yeah, I, a 4.9 attacking pen taker. Yeah. I don't care what the fixtures are. Yeah. Um, I got Thomas I Suchek for Christ's sake. So, yeah, uh, I think I could end up with, with, with Palmer myself this week. I think that could, yeah. that could actually, we, yeah, this is a classic you and me, like, radically different teams and like every now and then we just sync up and we have almost like player for player the exact squad so yes. that, that that certainly we could get very close this week um and uh the other team that has a, a tough fixture run coming up brandon it's uh it's luton town they they play uh they play Villa away the luton um, podcast liverpool at home man united away 
Uh, they played Brentford away, Arsenal, even even that Crystal Palace match in, in 13 is going to be a, a tough one for them. So, um, yeah, if you've been holding on to Carlton Morris for a while, I think uh, I don't know. It's me and like nine of the people I realize, but it might be time to, to move on from him. Uh, and Man City is. In some ways, I think of them as some being somewhat fixture proof, but it's it's a pretty poor run by their standards, and and I think that uh, I'm not sure the fixture difficulty rating system is fully caught up with how tough a match like Villa away is now, you know, for mm-hmm. for, for squads, and so uh, this is probably about as bad as a six match run as they're going to have um, this season, right? Man United away, Chelsea away, Liverpool, Spurs, and then Villa away, uh, and five of the next six. So. Um, I do think that, and and certainly we're not like inventing the idea of dropping Holland, but we haven't really talked about it much on this pod. And, uh, I, I think, it, I think it's valid. Um, I, um, I guess I just don't really want to do it. I mean, partially it's just, I feel like I, I would kind of cease to enjoy fantasy on the weekends, <laughs> which is yeah. every match. Yeah. I would, I just assume in every Man and city match, once I dropped in that, it would be, uh, I'd be filled with absolute dread. And uh, I just don't, I don't want two hours of dread every weekend, Brandon. It's a, uh, maybe that's <laughs> yeah. me being conservative, but I just, I don't want that. I don't want that kind of heat. Right, yeah. Are you, it's, it's like trying to own the, own the libs or something like, uh, yeah, sure, yeah. The, the sure price, <laughs> the price, your soul. Right. And so, all right. So I think, I think we've covered, I think we've covered, uh, some of the players that we target. We even end up coming around some, some of the low price assets here. So Brendan, let's take one final break. Let's get back and let's turn our gaze very specifically to game week 10, uh, which will kick off on Friday. I forgot we had a Friday match coming up nice. this week. Kind of weird. Spurs play Monday and Friday. What's up with that? <laughs> Why are they playing twice in five days? I realize they're not in Europe, but man, that's, that's, that's... I blame the Rugby World Cup. Okay, yeah, somehow that is responsible. <laughs> yeah, God, there's five matches on Sunday too. All right, let's take a break, Brandon. We'll get back and we'll talk about Game Week 10. All right, Brandon, we're back. Game Week 10 kicks off on Friday at Selhurst Park. Crystal Palace hosting Spurs. Uh, we do have European matches this week. So, again, be very careful if you're going to do two transfers early, uh, which Brandon's already done. Uh, it can be uh, – there's, there's a little bit of risk involved. But um, but I think uh, – I, I, I still think it's very interesting that Spurs play twice in, in five days. I guess, I guess that could be fine. I mean, if they play well on Monday – uh, maybe they just keep that positive energy going into the the Friday match or something. Uh, but it does feel tight, but, but I, I guess honestly, it's no different than like a, a team that plays Sunday and, you know, Saturday and when or Saturday and Tuesday in the, you know, the premier league and the champions league. Right. It's, I mean, rotation hasn't proved to be a major concern this season, even coming back from this recent international yeah. break. Uh, yeah, the, the players coming back from South America, et cetera, et cetera. It's yeah, just it's not really fine. playing into yeah. our, our strategizing right now. No, it's true. And I will have, uh, certainly some players for this match. I think that's a tricky match though. I do think that, um, I do think the palace Spurs is a, is a tough one to predict because, you know, Spurs have, um, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe I almost feel like we should just kind of, um, punt on, on this Friday match a little bit because it's, a. Uh, I, we just don't know what the, what's we're, we're recording this before the Spurs Fulham match. And I feel like that what happens in that will kind of inform our thinking a little bit about mm-hmm. Friday. So let's, let's kind of punt on that. I do want to talk about captain options for game week 10. Um, as you mentioned, Holland scored a uh, hat trick. Uh, was it, was it away at Old Trafford the last time they played in the Derby? Was it home or away? Well, I, I, I don't, I don't rightly recall. I'll say one thing and it will be the opposite on this podcast. Okay. He does not recall folks, but it's, uh, we know that Holland is capable of scoring hat tricks, no matter, no matter who he plays. So you're, you're going Holland captain this week then, right? Because, uh, I mean, my bus team, uh, is it's kind of a lazy man's bus team right now, but I do have Holland cap and Sala vice and Sala kind of gets the shiny new player vice. Uh, Ollie Watkins is, is you know, another option, home Luton Villa are making a routine of just hammering opposition at Villa park. Why not Watkins? I mean, at this point, I do wonder if just like the having of Watkins is the opportunity. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think, I think he should be a a seriously valid captain pick. I will say personally, I'm, I'm definitely going to be captaining Salah. I think that it's a, 
Uh, if you're if you're going to have a 12.5 million you know non Holland player and <laughs> one of the you know one of them is playing in in a in a, what you know just a slightly unpredictable derby match and one of them is at home to Forest um mm-hmm. I, it just feels like you got to go. and, and one of them has scored four goals in his last sure. two Premier League matches I just think everything points to to Salah as the as the top captain pick yeah and I think it's the it's the safer pick as well I think the yeah. the the tidal wave of fantasy managers are moving towards Salah just based on his exploits yeah. from the last month yeah. and Holland has not done much for us yeah. so I think the biggest EO will be with Salah I think you could argue yeah especially with a lot of people wild carding him in and stuff I I think that um you could argue that Holland is like the third or fourth best captain pick this week, which is pretty rare. I feel like for him, cause I think uh, I I'm with you. I think, I do think that Watkins is a, is a, you know, a, there's a strong shout for, for Watkins this week as a, as a captain pick or a vice captain pick maybe. Uh, and then I think honestly with Saka, you know, Sheffield United at home, I think that's a mm-hmm. great match for him as well. It's hard to see him coming out of that match without some kind of return. Um, so I think, I think maybe then I, I might put Holland fourth on that list and that's just fourth because he's, he's just such a consistent goal scorer, even, even when he's, I, I don't know why I'm, I'm on this floor thing so much today, but it, it is, <laughs> he just has an extremely yeah. high floor, right? It's just like you expect him to get something out of every single match that he plays, which you can't necessarily say for, for everyone else. I mean, um. Although honestly, it feels like Watkins has pretty like <laughs> extremely high floor at the moment as well. Yeah, uh, very hard to imagine Watkins not getting. Five uh, I, I do think it's helpful just to quickly note who's traveling and who's not in Europe midweek. Manchester United are home on Tuesday, hosting Copenhagen. Arsenal travel to Sevilla. They'll be in Spain on Tuesday, and then Tuesday. on Wednesday, City are uh, playing Young Boys away, and. Then you've got Newcastle home hosting Dortmund on okay. Thursday for the Europa thick fixtures, West Ham play away in some far flung place. Uh, so lots of people traveling, just, just more travel. Well, tra- travel agents making a killing out there right now. Do you remember where I, I'm Googling this? So uh, I want you to guess, and then I will tell you where is young boys, Brandon, do you know where young boys is? <sighs> Um, is it Sweden? Nope. <laughs> I'm sure you can literally find young boys in any, in any country in the world, Brandon, but it is yet BSC young boys are a Swiss professional sure. sports club based in Bern, Switzerland. So uh, yeah. there you go. It's an unusual name. Young boys. I mean, on the one hand, it's like, uh, I, I it's, it's one of those names that's clearly rooted in like, the 19th century, right? Like the young sure. boys, uh, athletic club or whatever. And <laughs> totally. You know, they just uh, never yeah. bothered to get the paperwork through to change it. Liverpool <laughs> yeah, exactly. and Brighton also home on Thursday hosting in the, their respective Europa league matches. Okay. Got it. All right. So, um, interesting. I, well, I think Switzerland's close enough for Man City that I, I wouldn't worry too much about heavy, heavy rotation there. So, um, well, all right. Well, I think that, um, I think, in terms of uh, transfer decisions, you've already made yours. I kind of talked about mine too already. I think the the plan for me is is I am going to try to find a way to bring in Watkins. It may not happen, right? Like I'm not. I am not going to to just absolutely you know move heaven and earth to make it happen. But that is my goal for this week is to find a way to bring in Watkins. If I if I don't, then I'm not actually quite sure what I would do. I mean, I have other problems to fix. I have. Um, I have a Stupinam still in my squad. I've got Carlton Morris, who I don't want to start. Um, Callum Hudson Adoy is now out for indefinitely. So, in some ways, Watkins may end up being like more of a luxury transfer, Mm -hmm. right? I'm basically like one more injury away from basically having to spend my transfers just just patching holes, right? And 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 not kind of worrying about luxury transfers. So, and and because I already have Sal and I plan to captain him this week. It doesn't, I don't I think it makes sense to do like, oh, I'm going to do a minus eight or a minus 12 or something crazy. Um, Cause I already have the player. I, I most want to captain, you know, for this game week. Um, so what about uh, X dog in him, Brandon? Who's the, who's your X D I H for, for game week 10. Ooh, who's got that dog brought in to him? you by the, <clears throat> the hit movie strays. Um, yeah. I'm going to go with, uh, with Gordon. 
uh, from Newcastle, Anthony Gordon. Mm, How about okay. him? Okay. I like I, it. I, I He was a guy who I wanted to be my Cole Palmer, mm-hmm. uh, but I, I couldn't stretch to him. I mean, he's yep. too expensive, but he looks great. And yep. I think everyone was kind of like curious about his move from Everton to Newcastle. And uh, even though yeah. he was a, a young talent, played really well in the – England was at U21 World Cup where he was like the player of the tournament. He's just turned it on for Newcastle. Yep. He's like legit a great winger for them. Yep. So I'm I'm definitely fantasy curious with Gordon and yeah. I Makes sense. Uh, I, Wolves, what do you what's your read on Wolves because yeah, I think I, it's like you, they're playing well. Neto yep. is a, I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of like X dog in him versus X dog in him with Neto versus Gordon in this match. Yeah, that's true. I should just pick Neto as my X D I H and then we can have a, a an X D I H off. No, I think that uh, Neto has finally realized some of that promise that he had at the start of the 2022 season, right? Where we were all, I, I had him. I think ma- many of us did uh, going into that season. He was a little bit of a flop that year. I mean, kind of crazy looking back. He had zero goals and two assists that season. Remember how much, how hot everyone was on Neto going into last season? I cannot believe he didn't score a single goal that year. Yeah. I know he got injured, but still, that's a... Uh, yeah, I, 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 I remember stars. this. Every time I look back at our preseason cover art from last season, I see a picture. Neto made the cover art for one of our season preview pods. And yes. I, yeah. That, that is a constant reminder to me of the hype around yeah. him. But seven so far, he has uh, seven assists uh, on the season, which is really remarkable. I mean, seven assists yeah. for a sub six million player is terrific, and he's scored a goal as well. And he has been known to score. I mean, I think last year was a little bit of a fluke in terms of his. Yeah, he, he does have a five goal eight assist season from a, a few years ago. So I think that there's there's promise with him that you could get even more. I think, and uh, so I yeah, I think um, I don't really know what to think about this Wolves team. It's it's a case I think of rearranging my my priors a little bit too, right? It's like I have a kind of sense about Wolves being kind of, um, I don't know. I mean, honestly, like if I'm, if I'm being totally honest with you, my feeling about Wolves is that they've been sort of uninteresting pushovers for a couple, couple of years, just like not a <laughs> wow. team that I'm like, not a team that I'm like especially interested in. And I, and I say this as somebody who used to who really loved Wolves when they came up. Like I, I really loved those those kind of early early Wolves teams. And then they, but they just sort of took like a turn for the for the boring for a while there. And now it feels like, I don't know, something's kind of clicking a little bit. It's, mm-hmm. it's in, interesting the way, um, I don't really, you know, it's like Huang He Chan, like it feels like he is just getting, like he's, it's, he's just involved in so many things. It's, uh, you yeah. know, he, he, another player who is, uh, he's 5.4, uh, he's got five goals, kind of sneakily picked up five goals in his first um, nine matches of the season. Mm-hmm. So he's another, and I, I think, you know, he only had, he's only started, I think, maybe the last three matches um, for them before the last five, it looks like. So um, yeah, I mean, so five goals and five starts pretty, pretty yeah, impressive. nice enabler. I like him yep. too. Yep. I like a lot of these wolves players yep. Uh, yep. Um, for sure. But then there's just a question of, do they have the dog in him? All right. So I went Anthony Gordon yep. and I'm not going to let you get away with not actually putting, putting a name on. No, I, I, I agree that I don't think that would be, that would be very fun. Okay. I, I got one. I got one. He's been knocking at the door for a while, Brandon. Uh, and, uh, he finally, he, you know, he finally knocked on that door and then he finally, you know what he did, Brandon, he opened that door. So I think, uh, now that the door is open, he's going to walk through that door. And that man, Brandon is Declan Rice. I'm predicting hmm. two goals and two for Declan Rice. He's got that dog in him, Brandon. He's ready to, take charge but man he was born with a dog inside of him yeah, i think yeah, declan rice yeah. was i love those the, the his high knee running style you know it's just like he's really uh you never miss him on the pitch right i feel like he's really yeah. uh yeah he's adjusted so well it's funny we like never talk about him he just like joined and just like yep yeah, he's like really good and you know it's sort of it's like i don't know it's it's, it's it's just so seamless the way it's worked out with him at, at arsenal yeah but they still seem like they're missing something and that Arsenal yeah. midfield that uh, upon Xhaka's departure, like I know another injury sort of situation, but uh, Jorginho ain't it uh, no, for them at this point in his Havertz, career. Havertz is a, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe flop is a little too strong, but I don't think anyone's like blown away with, with, with what he's shown so far. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So final question, Brandon is if you can only watch one match this weekend, we're all busy people. Many of us are parents. You can only watch one match this weekend, Brandon. What match is it going to be? 
Oh, well, I will not suggest the Manchester Derby. Uh, we'll all we'll all be with our families then. <laughs> I guess Chelsea Brentford would be, be my fun. pick yeah. because a West London Derby of sorts. And I think both of these teams kind of back on the up after having a rocky period. Yep. Uh, I, I predict a very, a very cagey, maybe two, one, two, two affair. Yeah. I think that uh, Chelsea Brentford could be a lot of fun, especially if Brentford play any, anywhere like they played this weekend. They, they've really been down and uh, it seems like they somehow they, find a way to reset a little bit uh, over the international break. I mean, even, even given who, you know, that they were playing Burnley, I, I, I just going into that break, I was like, well, I guess they actually played well in the Man United match, but then of course they got totally, uh, they got whatever. Yeah. They got McTominay right at the end there. So he would have been another XDIH pick for this week, Brandon, you know, four and <laughs> four and three. Yeah. Possibly. Too obvious. We'll see. Too obvious. Yeah. And he has, he has scored because we, 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 we saw him do it in person. He has scored a, a, in a home match mm-hmm. in the Manchester Derby. So we, it could happen for him again. Uh, I, I guess I will go with that. I know that's a, that's a hipster pick, but I, I do think that uh, the main United man city match is a um, it's unusual this year. I just given man city have not, they still feel a little unsettled kind of maybe because of the KDB injury, the defense doesn't feel like it's quite figured things out. I guess they won't have a kanji now, which is kind of, <laughs> I, I mean, it's not a huge, it's not, it's not like a, it's, Diaz in, be fine. It, it's true. It's not like a catastrophic loss, but still it's like, they've lost a little bit of defensive depth now. So, uh, mm-hmm. it was a weird, that was a weird, uh, and I guess it was just the yellow car accumulation reds are always kind of weird, but it was just a, well, Ashley young got one of those too. <laughs> they got the rare yellow card accumulation in the 37th minute. You don't see that very often. That guy, there was like a, a, a five minute period where I was like, oh, we might actually get a real good game from Ashley Young here. And then yeah. within the blink of an eye, it was over. It was over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, but I, I think, I, I mean, Man United, I, who really knows what they're what they're bringing to the table at the moment. But I, I, I guess just because it's, it's, it feels very unpredictable to me, uh, then I, the Manchester Derby would be the one, uh, to watch. And, you know, it's always a good crowd too. So if you're watching it with friends or family, people who don't watch uh, a ton of premier league, that might be a, a good one too. So that's your pod, Brandon. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening to the pod. Uh, once again, if you'd like to support the pod, you can go to patreon.com slash always cheating. We'll do another podcast on Thursday after all the European matches have taken place to preview uh, game week 10 with a little more information, hopefully some press conference news as well. And uh, uh, that's it. And you can find the podcast on uh, Apple, Spotify, Google. I'm, I'm doing part of your little read here, again, Brandon, but you can find yeah. us over the place. Give us a review. If you, uh, are on YouTube. We are on YouTube as well. We just don't really advertise it that much, but, uh, or our goal this year is to, is to get on YouTube more often. So if you can, you know, pop on, give us a follow that would really be appreciated. Um, uh, you know, we always talk about these different places you can find us in podcasts, but I'm like, people, people are already listening somewhere. Right. But I, mm-hmm. I feel like YouTube is not necessarily, uh, where you are at the moment. So have you ever uh, thought yeah. about listening to the same podcast in five different platforms? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe, maybe you've got like a two screen work set up and you like having something on YouTube while you're, while you're working away. I don't oh, know. You know, yeah, you remember Flaming that. Lips put out that album where you Zyrica. had to yeah. Yeah, put it on like three <laughs> different boom boxes yeah. and it, yeah. it plays simultaneously. We should do that for YouTube, yeah. Spotify, and Apple. Yeah. You could play us at like the, the like full speed, half speed and double mm-hmm. speed and sort of get a different experience in every year. Uh, Brennan, do you want to thank our producer patrons? Gladly. Thank you to producers Mike DiPietro, Trevor Ingerson, our buddy Chris Howell, Babas Kuhn, James Holland, Dave Wagner Lodal, Nick Wright, Lazarus Yanos, Jesse Halstead, Bruce Kerr, Brian Chin, Blair Jacobson, Todd Byerly, Andy Portlock at FPL Merch, Carrie Swanson, Jefferson Turner, Buffalo Wild Mings, Francis Moore, Sam Shower, Caleb Robbie, Vulgar Paulson Kruger, Alex Holcomb, James Keatley, The Saint, Bob Fox, Craig Jackson, Shalin F. Kadakia, Terrence O'Donnell, Paul Herzig, Heath Cram, Thomas Tislov, Noan Louise, Travis Grant, Julio Pena, Linus Vennerstrom, Dan Parsons, James C., Matthew Skinner, Fro Jacobson, Brennan, Daniel Hart, Lolly, and Ben Coombs. I read all the producers. <laughs> that was kind of <laughs> anticlimactic. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Josh, for uh, being on Always Cheating. 
you for yet another week. My pleasure. Please have me on. Have me on again sometime. (laughs) Um, All right. Well, thanks everyone for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.